Hey guys, this is video one of how to winterize your car. Uh, today we're doing how to test the antifreeze. So this here is a antifreeze tester and on this side... It's got balls. It's got balls, so it's a boy. It says protect it to degrees in Fahrenheit, it's a list of degrees. And then on this side it says floating balls is a five through one. So it corresponds how many balls float is how many degrees it is. So we're going to get down here and get some coolant out of the reservoir. Oops. And pull that up. And you can see here that just two balls, well... Two and a half maybe. That one's kind of slowly moving up. And then going down. I'd just say two. I'd say yeah. it's got two that are good solid floaters. So two is plus five degrees. And that's not good enough for where we are. So this needs to be changed out with some new antifreeze. What happens if you don't have the right protection? It gets down to negative 20 around here. What well, would happen to this car? Break your engine. It can. There's freeze plugs in the engine. I'd show them to you but they're behind the exhaust and intake manifolds. And if you're lucky those will pop out but otherwise it'll actually crack the block and cause severe engine damage. So it's best to not mess around and just uh, get it changed out. Um, so what's normal protection? If you, we had all five balls floating on that, what would that mean? What would our protection be? Negative 40. And that's almost that's good, good enough for Fairbanks. Almost good enough for Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get the antifreeze changed. Let's converse about coolant, shall we? When you open your hood, some cars will have a radiator cap and then they'll have another little tank like this one and some of them just have a little tank. Um, you don't want to do this when the car is hot uh, for the simple fact that it's under pressure. Cooling systems are typically operated under or contain hold back from the heat. The heat generates the pressure but about 15 psi pounds per square inch that's about 1.05 bar or atmospheres or whatever um, but basically you want to open this slowly. You see how this is coming up to get me? This hot antifreeze wants to scald me, so I'm just going to go slow. Now, when you winterize your car, everybody's like, I already know it's antifreeze. That's the name of it. I already know everything. Well, uh, that's true, but going into winter, if you're having hypothermia, if you're cold, if you're jittering because your heater won't work, it may be because it's out of antifreeze or that you have air in the system and it's making your heater not work. And then, of course, uh, naturally, you want to check and make sure that the specific gravity of your antifreeze is such that you have protection. So here's a great big tester, so it's real easy to read and see. When you look at this, you can see that there's an arrow. You can see it kind of bubbling around. It looks like it's pointing at the cap. Now I've got it to where it's kind of pointing down. Uh, but basically, you just read off to the side what the protection is. So this is good to about negative 50 Fahrenheit for a freeze point. So he's in great shape. Uh, depending where you live, if you live in Nome, Alaska, uh, you're going to need all of that. If you live here, you need to be good at least to negative 20. Now, if you're going to add coolant, it's important to add the right kind. You notice that this wasn't the green coolant that you're used to seeing. The green coolant is ethylene glycol. And ethylene glycol can only really mix with ethylene glycol. It doesn't mix well with this other kind. This is uh, propylene gly glycol. So there's a difference between them, and typically if you ask the guy at the parts store, he'll tell you which is which. Now this is the, the nicer, more expensive stuff, full strength, concentrate stuff. The concentrate stuff, it doesn't work as good as it does when you mix some water with it. And you look on the back of this, there's a chart that says how much to mix for what protection. You can see there. So, and this is in quartz, and if you ask the guy at the parts store, there's a uh, Software, they'll tell you how much uh, you need in your car. But basically, this is long life antifreeze. It lasts longer um, and it protects pretty well. Propylene glycol, ethylene, or ethylene glycol, propylene glycol. That's a tongue twister. Who can say that? So, this is a 50 50 mix. This is pretty weak. You're not getting your money's worth with this, so I don't typically buy it. I bought it just because of this video. I just wanted to show it's pre diluted. What does diluted mean? It means it's watered down, basically, in this case, as well as in uh, common speech. So it's already added water. So this is great if you live in Florida, 
or some place like that. So this has got a freezing point of negative 34 Fahrenheit. So that'll get you by. But if you live in Alaska, it's not going to get you by. If you live up in uh, northern Alberta, you know, it's not going to work so well. Because oftentimes they get to negative 40 and you'll freeze. And what's the point of antifreeze if it freezes? Come on. So it's important to know that. So this you do need to add water because it's concentrate. The other one you don't. It's already pre-diluted. Well, like I say, make sure this is full. If you have air in the system, it's your antifreeze running through the heater core that gives you your heat in the cab of the car, or cabin, cab of the truck, cabin of the car. So make sure that's topped off, make sure it's the right level, and that concludes our little video snippet about uh, antifreeze for getting your car ready for winter. Um, it's important to change your antifreeze. If you got the green stuff, ethylene glycol, it's usually a good idea to change it every three to five years. If you have the propylene glycol, oftentimes it's good to go for about 100,000 miles, some say even 150,000 miles. On the subject of antifreeze, when you go to start your car in the morning or maybe you got a remote start and you just push a button, uh, that gets your car warmed up so that the antifreeze is warm enough. Like I say, remember the antifreeze is what's uh, delivering the heat into the cabin via the heater core. Uh, you have a block heater, it'll heat it up for you. Now you say, well, I don't know if my car has a block heater or not. If you drive a diesel, it probably came with one installed in it. It may not have the cord plugged into the block heater, uh, but most diesel trucks, instead of a freeze plug in one spot, it'll have a block heater. It's like just like a water heater, an electric water heater in your house. You have a little heat element, a little loop. Some come out and they go down and back in. Uh, I just installed one recently for uh, some folks in Wyoming and they just uh, have a thread-in type because there's a thread-in type drain cap on the Honda's uh, V6 block on each side. So all I got to do is just unscrew that, screw in the new one, run the cord up to the front, and then you plug it in at night. And then that little, uh, that little uh, heating element works just like an electric uh, water heater thing. So when you get in your car, you, unpl well, you unplug it. What I like to do with my cord for my truck, because it is a diesel, it has a factory installed water heater or uh, block heater, heats the antifreeze, is uh, I just run the cord out in front so I have to walk across the front of the cord to get into the side of the truck and that way I always remember to unplug it. When I route the cord for my uh, water heater, I keep saying water heater, uh, block heater, I route it in such a way that if I drive off with it, it'll just unplug. I leave enough slack, enough hang down to where as I drive away it won't hurt anything. It'll just unplug itself. So that's it. I wanted to cover that. Um, and uh, that concludes a little antifreeze section on winterizing your car. Let's go to another one. Go ahead. You can close this window. Go back and see another one.